Harmony Chakus joining us on the Western Pizza Guest Hotline. Um, hey, I saw this on on Twitter. Uh, how you were you were named captain of your hockey team, hockey Indigenous. Fantastic follow out on social social media. Um, quite the accomplishment, right? But you're are you a four year player? What what's so okay? Um, it's the Wildcats. Take us through. Is it is it the Wild? It's Wildcats, right? Yes, Wildcats. And and take take us through the school. Where's the school? What's the school all about? Uh, so the school's located in Providence, Rhode Island, um, out on the East Coast. It's uh, the smallest state uh, in the state, so it's pretty <laughs> tiny. But it, it's honestly amazing and uh, totally could, totally different compared to back home. Uh, but we have two campuses here, so we have a campus that's right on the water um, in the harbor and then one that's right in the heart of the city so uh, you really get both feels of both like you know the calm and chill uh, ocean and then like the busy downtown scenery so it's pretty awesome how did you end up there um actually i was recruited uh during that like wonky time of covid where we couldn't go do like campus tours or anything like that so i was really just being sent pictures from uh, the coach who used to be here and tried to do as much as we can virtually. Um, but honestly, the pictures and just like the two campuses is what really drew me in because I was like, obviously being from Saskatchewan, it's flat and not near any <laughs> bodies of water. So I was like, it would be pretty cool to play hockey. And that's always been my dream ever since I was little. So right on the ocean was honestly perfect for me. Johnson and Wales is the university. Um, what What conference are you guys in? Uh, this year we'll be playing in the CNE, which is the Conference of New England. But the past three years we played in the NEHC, but we just made the move this year. So it'll be uh, all new teams, which we're really, really looking forward to. But yeah. What are you taking in school? Um, I'm majoring in exercise and sports science. So right, right along that uh, athletic trail to be uh, an athletic trainer, hopefully in the future. So and work with athletes in that capacity. So yeah. So you, you talk about like that, that Rhode Island and that area, right? Like you're right next door to Boston. It is yeah. massive, uh, massive hockey country in there. So like there would, there would, there be a lot of traveling or are you guys playing a lot of the teams in that kind of, you, you said New England and then in that Eastern seaboard area. Yeah, mainly uh, with this new league, it's a lot of the New England teams. So I think the farthest we travel um, might be up to Maine, I think, which is about like two to three yeah. hours. Um, in our old conference that we competed in last year, we would drive up to like upstate New York um, to play like Elmira, which was a nice like six hour bus ride. So <laughs> it was kind of like- that's that's Sasky kind of stuff right there, though. Right. Yeah. And then you, you played you played in Manitoba. So you, you've done yeah. the long uh, the long yeah. bus trips. It, it was funny talking to like teammates who were like, oh, the farthest I would travel is like maybe an hour to play team and I was like oh I played in the CSSHL before this and we would travel like three days to go play in a showcase so I was like, this is easy. like we're on and off the bus like no problem so yeah <laughs> yeah you just talked about your time in the CSSHL at Pilot Mount um talk mm -hmm. about sort of your experience of going from the traditional minor hockey route over to um the academy at Pilot Mount um it was uh, it was definitely a transition I had to like adapt to because, you know, in the minor hockey, you kind of practice like sporadically throughout the week, usually like at night or whatever. Um, but then going to a hockey academy, you practice every day and then you'd play like four to five games in a weekend and then come back and do it again. All like doing that, balancing school and everything like that and making sure your grades were up there. So I think the academy route really did help me transition into college a lot easier than if I had stayed playing like AAA or minor hockey in Saskatchewan. Um, so I was really thankful for that opportunity because coming here, it's the same thing. You practice every day, you play on the weekends, you get um, one day off, which was, I guess, different from uh, yeah. playing in Manitoba, but same, it was the same structure, making sure your grades are um, good and you're still eligible to play. So it made it a lot easier. When you let like your minor hockey, um, where where was that all played, and did you have to play co-ed up until a certain uh, certain age? Uh, so I actually started out when I was eight, so kind of later than a lot of people. Um, I went right into girls hockey, and that was all just in Regina, um, 
and then yeah i had some catching up to do so a lot of summers of like skating and everything like that so yeah most of that was just played in regina and i never had the opportunity to play with boys but yeah. growing up with girls who did they definitely said it was like different and looking back on it something i sometimes wish i experienced but i do uh i did enjoy my the route i took so so you're probably a role model now who were your role models uh when you were younger when i was younger uh specifically one indigenous role model i had was bridget laquette and as also a defenseman i always wanted to be like her and she had an amazing shot so that was one thing i was always like i want to have a shot like her um and then same thing with like uh, Chris Letang has always been one of my role models as well. Again, another defenseman. So same thing like that. But for him, he was more my role model because I was always like growing up so defensive minded, right? Like I needed to stay on the blue line. I couldn't go in all of this stuff. So watching him play, it was nice to see that like you can be so versatile as a player. So really looked then, up for him, looked up to him in that capacity. Um, you know, like when, when you come back here and all that, I'm sure you get, like I said, you're a role model now, right? Like I'm sure you're helping, um, the younger girls, probably younger, even boys around saying, Hey, like this is, this is a, uh, attainable, you know, I'm playing hockey, mm -hmm. uh, NCAA down South. Um, it just must, must be awesome to kind of full circle now where you are. Yeah. It's been amazing this past summer, actually, my brother, um, had ran like helped run a youth camp a summer sports camp and so he put together a bunch of different sports for the youth to come you know try like uh we did basketball volleyball floor hockey flag football things like that and so i they had asked me to come out and speak on just my experience and like you know let the youth know that like it's 100 percent possible for them to continue chasing their dreams in whatever sport that they wanted to play and so I think it was in that moment that I kind of like, it kind of clicked that I was like, I have like, you know, a younger audience looking up to me. Um, and when like, you know, they're asking questions and like, you know, like, how's your experience? Like, do you miss home? All of that stuff. I was like, like really thinking about it. And I was like, I do, but like, you know, I wouldn't change it for the world because I was given so many different opportunities that if I had stayed home, I don't think I would have gotten. So. Uh, did your dad play hockey? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, was he, was he, I heard he was a weapon with the Q Park Canucks. Any, any truth to that? Uh, I can neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting some text messages in here. That's, that's why. Um, what, okay. And then, and then Chloe, it's Halloween. What, what's Halloween like on campus tonight? Oh, it's, well, actually, uh, we don't have classes on Fridays. So it's yes. uh, Monday. Nice. Thursday, so of course, everyone's out celebrating tonight. Um, we have a hockey game in two days, and so we have um, we're staying low, stay laying low tonight. So. <laughs> but we did, uh, we did dress up like um, uh, on the ice and stuff like that, and on campus, and everyone would wear like it was mainly onesies, I think, because it's the easiest thing to throw on, and you get to be comfortable. So <laughs> for sure, I saw a lot of those around campus today. <laughs> uh right on well hey you're the captain of the team that's uh that's awesome down there thanks so much for for taking some time and joining us great interview and continued success down there thank you so much for having me right on uh harmony chakus from pasqua first nation playing uh that's hey ncaa hockey down in uh johnson and wales university it's a nice area down there definitely yeah i was i was planning i was going to ask her about uh, if she had the opportunity to play the national aboriginal hockey championships oh, okay. as well is she still there that, that's a good question sorry buddy yeah no no problem I, my cu I obviously growing up in in southern ontario um my cousin is uh, indigenous as well and went to syracuse university and played as a goaltender women's hockey and had the opportunity a few times to play the national aboriginal hockey championships and i just was curious if harmony had had that opportunity as well harmony can you hear that yep i did um i had two opportunities but i only got to really play in one uh i was i think first year bantam the first time i played for team sask and then uh my second time i was uh i made team manitoba uh but then again it fell into that uh covid year so we never actually got to play that year but i yeah. would have played with team manitoba that year so yeah, that tournament was always super cool because then uh, the the gold medal game every year would be on APTN, mm -hmm. um, yeah. and which was which was uh, a super cool opportunity for those athletes to have the opportunity. And and uh, Harmony talked about Bridget, and she actually like lives in my lives in my hometown now, as where she's sort of 
stepped away from the game or temporarily playing on and off in, th- in Brantford, Ontario. I th- so I think the Freddy has a female decision uh, or division now too, doesn't it? Have you played in that? Yeah, I played in that um, for I want two, two or three years now. Uh, yeah. I played with uh, Moose Creek a couple of times, and then this past time I played with the Alberta Thunderbirds, where we uh, lost in the championship. Oh. So it was a re- it was a really good game, though. Went into like overtime and everything, and both teams were just so competitive. And again, being in that atmosphere it was amazing, having all the fans. Uh, come watch and just knowing you had so much support from like you know people you've never even met and they were cheering for your team and everything like that so it was pretty surreal yeah. to be in that moment. <laughs> yeah that tournament's off the charts all right okay well we'll let you go uh, you said you're gonna lay low tonight yeah. uh yeah uh, even though it's halloween uh thanks again so much let's catch up again uh congratulations thank you